Hello friends, welcome back to my show. This video is inspired by Vivek Agnihotri's film, The Kashmir Files. The Kashmir Files has been a terrific box office hit and it earned more than 200 crore rupees within a fortnight. And it also generated a lot of hue and cry from the secularist liberal front who were slapped in the face by the reality that they had tried to brush under the carpet for all these decades. This video is also about another long forgotten genocide. People who were witness to that are dead, but their written testimonies survive. This video is about the direct action day genocide, which occurred in Kolkata between 16th and 19th of August, 1946. We are now in the month of Ramzan, or as the Arabs call it, Ramadan. It started on the 3rd of April, 2022. Most of my viewers are told to believe that Ramzan is a holy month of fasting, piety and prayer. Well, 78 Ramzans ago, during this so-called holy month, the believers of the faith came out in the streets of Calcutta, as Kolkata was then known with the sole purpose of killing, looting, raping and setting homes and shops on fire, targeting the kafir, the infidel, the non-believer of their faith. All this in the name of religion. And I am talking about the genocide, better known as Calcutta killings of 1946. Here is a snapshot of the Sunday statesman on the second day of the genocide. It is shouting, over 270 killed and 1600 injured. But this was just the second day. This bloodbath was to continue for two more days with even greater severity. Did you know that a film was indeed made about the Ramzan genocide of Calcutta? The name of the film was 1946 Calcutta Killings. While Kashmir files grossed more than 200 crores in just a fortnight, the 1946 Calcutta killings grossed less than 30,000 rupees and it was played on only one screen across the whole country. This story needs to be told and retold because there are many lessons to be learned. Otherwise, there will be many more such genocides that will be perpetrated over and over again. Before I proceed any further, let me tell you why I am using the word genocide. If you pick up the Oxford English Dictionary, it defines genocide as the deliberate killing of a large number of people from a particular nation or ethnic group or a religion with the sole aim of destroying that particular group. As we shall see that the Ramzan killings of Calcutta were just that. They were the prelude to the partition and the riots of partition that followed and the ethnic cleansing that took place in Kashmir a few decades later. So friends, do not think that it was anything less than a genocide. This massacre began from dawn on 16th of August and it continued till the end of 19th August. What was the significance of choosing this time? What you see on this screen is a snapshot of the Gregorian calendar for August 1946. If you look at the date in the Muslim Hijra calendar, it will start making sense. It turns out that it was in the month of Ramazan and the killings were done under the guise of direct action day. It was a call for strike and closure of all businesses across India to fortify the demand of a separate nation for Muslims or for Pakistan. The mayor of Calcutta made an appeal to all Muslims in Urdu and Bengali language. The name of the mayor was Mr. S. M. Usman and it read thus. What Mr. Usman said was, I appeal to the Muslims of Calcutta to rise to the occasion. We are in the midst of the month of Ramazan fasting. But this is a month of real jihad, a holy war. Let Muslims be brave. Muslims must remember that it was in Ramzan 
that the Quran was revealed. The permission for jihad was granted by Allah. The Muslim League is fortunate that it is starting its action in this holy month. Would you call that a pious declaration? Think for yourselves. Now here is what the Muslim League pamphlet said. It said, We Muslims have had the crown and have ruled. Do not lose heart. Be ready and take swords. O Kafir, your doom is not far and the general massacre will come. We shall show you our glory with swords in hand and will have a special victory. This was the clarion call to all Muslims to kill, loot, rape and maim the infidel or the kafir. Please mark each word of the Muslim League pamphlet and make sense of it. To build the morale of the killers and to provide a rationale which was supported by the Quran, loudspeakers of mosques in their Friday prayers were reminding the faithful that on the 17th day of the month of Ramazan, Prophet Muhammad waged the bloody battle of Badr, which resulted in his first decisive victory over the heathens, the Kafirs, the non-believers, which finally led to the subsequent conquest of Makkah. And as history bears out, this is what happened. India ended up into a partition in which two separate nations, one for Muslims and one for non-Muslims was supposed to be created. The next stage of pre-planning was to collect the material to strike. Special coupons for gallons of petrol were issued in the name of Muslim League ministers. The petrol was used to make bombs. One month's food ration was stocked to feed the Muslim League gundas. As a rule, the constables in West Bengal police were recruited according to what was known as the ABCD rules. These four alphabets stood for the districts of Ara, Baliya, Chapra and Devriya. These districts around the boundary of United Provinces and Bihar in the area generally known as Bhojpur. The people from this area, especially the men, are well built, tough and loyal and they make the ideal police constable material. There was just one problem which Mr. Shuravardi, the chief minister, had with them. They were all devout Hindus. They were worshippers of Lord Hanuman and had undying loyalty to Ram. This was the main problem. To overcome this problem, the chief minister of Bengal, Shuravardi, began recruiting Punjabi Muslims and Pathan constables for the Bengal police. These people have been described to be, by nature, extremely fierce and cruel. And in fact, they were used in British jails in India for application of third degree methods. This was the level of cruelty that they could exact on the poor souls who came under their baton or stick. Before direct action day, Shuravardi transferred 22 Hindu police officers out of 24 key posts in Calcutta to disable police interference and give the Muslims a free hand for the genocide. These are facts that are recorded and available in government archives. These are two shocking images taken by Margaret Burke White, the celebrated photographer of Time Life magazine. They speak a million words. The image on the left is the scene of a street after the massacre. You can see the bodies strewn all along the path, piled up. And the picture on the right captures the sky and the adjacent walls that show vultures waiting to chomp off the flesh of the fresh corpses. I will now read out excerpts from the secret report from the Eastern Command Headquarters of the Army. It is dated 24th of August. 
and is marked as secret and personal. It is addressed to one Brigadier Boyce, who was Director of Military Intelligence. This paper also can be viewed on the URL given at the bottom of the slide. It reads, My dear Brigadier, I refer to you to my DO and it gives a reference number dated 8th August paragraph 4 regarding the police morale and my DO and it gives a reference number dated 16th August regarding the possibilities of a first class communal clash. In other words, the military intelligence had full knowledge that trouble was brewing. In fact, it is described in the report as the possibility of a first class communal clash. The same report continues further and says that our patrols were out, but due to the tremendous fights that were going on, it was impossible for us to force our way into the areas in which the main killings were taking place. It continues further and says, one of the most interesting points was that Europeans were not attacked. No bricks were thrown at army lorries except in very stray cases or when they took active part in dispersing mobs. So it shows that these riots were focused particularly on Hindus. The Europeans, Calcutta is the city of the black hole of Calcutta. But the Europeans were spared, even the soldiers, unless they took an active part in dispersing the mobs. Continuing further, the report says, it now remains to be seen as to whether the Muslims will start any trouble on the Eid day, which takes place on the 28th or 29th of August, or will they start any trouble when Nehru's government is proclaimed? Personally, I don't think they will. There may be a few minor clashes, but I don't expect anything in a big way, though we are ready for it. In other words, the trouble is not yet over and it all depends upon the political developments that will take place in Delhi. The secret and personal report continues and it says that there is hardly a person in Calcutta who has a good word for Shuravardi, respectable Muslims included. For years he has been known as the king of the Gundas and my own private opinion is that he fully anticipated what was going to happen and allowed it to work itself up and probably organized the disturbance with his Gunda gangs as this type of individual has to receive compensation every now and then. It is difficult to estimate the number of casualties but I should say it is somewhere in the region of two to three thousand at least. There were corpses all over northern Calcutta. They were there in rivers, canals, side lanes, in fact everywhere. The number of shops looted and burnt must be somewhere in the region of eight to nine thousand. We have seen the figures given by the newspapers which could have been doctored. But here we have one army intelligence report reporting to the Eastern headquarters. These are talking about the reality on the ground. Casualties anywhere between two to three thousand. Shops looted anywhere between eight to nine thousand. And it also talks about the preparatory work that was that had gone into this particular genocide and we have seen how it all built up slowly but surely. Let us now look at what some international reporters had to say. Here is what Time magazine reported in its August 26, 1946 issue. It, the correspondent writes, rioting Muslims went after Hindus with guns, knives and clubs looted shops, stoned newspaper offices and set fire to Calcutta's business district. The police blotters were filled with stories of women raped, mutilated, burnt alive. Indian police, backed by British 
Spitfire scouting planes and armored cars battered the mobs. So it was not just a riot where police were wielding lattes. This was a full-scale war where fighter planes like Spitfire were brought out and as were armored cars who had to battle the mobs who were out to commit genocide. We are all very familiar with the saying, Nero fiddled while Rome burned. Nero was the Roman emperor. Here we can say, Nehru and Gandhi fiddled while Calcutta burned, and it would not be out of place. Here is what the government archives reveal. Gandhi kept mum and did not come out with any statement giving his reactions. Nehru, of course, was preoccupied with the formation of the interim government at the center. Neither Gandhi nor Nehru cared to visit Calcutta to see the plight of the citizens after the Holocaust of August 1946. So friends, this was the state of affairs. Chacha Nehru and the father of the nation, Bapu Gandhi, did not even bother to go for applying a healing balm to the people who had suffered so much. For those of you who are not aware of the political events or the personalities involved, I will briefly acquaint you with the principal players of this drama. The two characters central to the turn of events were Jinnah of Muslim League and Gandhi of Congress. The next person, of course, was the political heir of Mr. Gandhi. And that person, all of you know, is Mr. Nehru. The third person is Sir Strafford Cripps, who was sent by Churchill in 1942 in the what is called as the Cripps Mission and later by Prime Minister Clement Attlee of UK in 1946 to work out the details of Indian independence. And finally, we have Hussein Shurawardi. He claimed Arabic descent, but was a Bengali speaking Muslim and was even prepared to create an independent United Bengal, which of course he would rule. Shuravardi is famously or infamously known as the Butcher of Bengal and quite aptly so, you will agree. Here is a graphical representation of the population of Bengal. Muslims constituted 53% of the population. Hindus were the second largest, comprising of 42% of the population, which means they were in minority. And other religions constituted a mere 5%. These included Sikhs, Christians, Jains, and others. If you look at the figures for Calcutta, Calcutta city as such had a Hindu majority in terms of numbers. There were more than 65% or nearly two-thirds the total population. But that applied only to Calcutta. Let us now look at the numbers in the Provincial Assembly of Bengal. The assembly had 250 seats. Out of these, Muslim League had 113 seats. They were the single largest party, but they were still short of the majority mark, which was 126 seats. No single party had a majority. The second largest party was Congress, which held 86 seats. Europeans held 25 seats, Independents 14, and others which included Hindu Mahasabha, KPP and couple of other smaller parties and the Communist Party of India, they held another 12 seats. So naturally the Muslims sought support from some other entities other than Congress in order to form a government. Here is the timeline of events that led to the Direct Action Day. That is 16th August 1946, which led to all the killings. 
It began with the Cabinet Commission from Britain, which arrived in India, and it included Sir Strafford Cripps, who had made an unsuccessful mission earlier, back in 1942. The purpose of this Cabinet mission was to divide India into three administrative regions, but I am not going into that, although you can always read that from a number of websites or books of history. By July 1946, the demand of Mr. Jinnah for a separate Pakistan was rejected. It was after this rejection of his demand that Mr. Jinnah called for a direct action day and the date was set as 16th August 1946. This was the day when the genocide of Hindus began. We have seen the announcements made from mosques, pamphlets and papers which were distributed to people or they were published in newspapers such as the Star of India for instance. All these papers, pamphlets, announcements from mosques called for violence and they backed the, this with the demands of their holy book Quran. What was the aftermath of this ground-shaking tragedy? The government of Bengal appointed an inquiry commission which was presided by the Supreme Justice of India, Sir Patrick Spence. And although the commission interrogated many witnesses, its conclusions were never published. These are the Calcutta files that need to be revealed, opened and published and brought to the attention of the people. So the question that must come into your mind is, what has changed in Indian politics since the British left? What has changed in the past 76 years according to the Gregorian calendar or the 78 Ramzans that have just passed? So while we are talking about what has changed, let us recall that after the power was transferred to Pakistanis and Indians on 15th of August 1947, there was a Congress government in power in West Bengal. This was followed by a long rule of the communists. And now we are having Trinamul Congress led by Mamta Banerjee governing the state. All these parties have been appeasing Muslims because they form a solid vote bank and they have been adding fuel to fire by encouraging illegal immigration of Muslim hordes from Bangladesh. To snub the Hindu and to encourage Muslim violence, Mamta Banerjee declared 16th of August as Khela Hobe Day. It might sound innocent because we can see in this picture she is playing with a football with a funny face on that. But friends, this is actually a pun. Khela Hobe is a Bengali term which means the game is on. I'm sure you must have realized what that pun means. 16th August is a day that people live with the sad memory of the Holocaust that began on that day. Friends, this is a warning and if you don't wake up, you could end up repeating Ramzan of the Hijri year 1365, the day the massacre started, 16th of August. The Kashmiri Hindu genocide was also committed after this Khela Hobe in 1946. So friends, simply wake up. Zaina Banu is an Indian social researcher and she studied in great depth the causes and effects of communal riots in India since early 18th century. She covered a period of 250 years. It became the topic of her PhD thesis and was later published as a book by Popular Prakashan in 1989. What she found was that over 95% of these riots were initiated by Muslims. Further, 
It was her finding after she did some calculations that Muslims are more than 190 times more prone to resort to violence than other communities. Now this is quite a shocking revelation and we must ask ourselves why. So friends, take note of what many wise men have repeatedly said in the past. Those who cannot remember their past are condemned to repeat it. Or those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. And further, silence ensures that history will repeat itself. Here is a brief list of references. Please read and explore each one of these to find out the truth yourself. Each of these will lead you to further information. You must get your facts yourself. Don't wait for somebody to feed them with a spoon. So friends, that brings me to the end of this video. Thank you very much for your attention. Please share this video with your friends. Spread the knowledge. And if you liked it, please say so by pressing the like button. You can also subscribe to my channel, which has got only one purpose, which is to enlighten all of you. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.